Good morning, and welcome to the change of command ceremony where Rear Admiral Shoshana S. Chatfield will be relieved as the President of the United States Naval War College by Rear Admiral Peter A. Garvin. I am Command Master Chief Joe Farney, and I will be your Master of Ceremonies. At this time, I would ask that everyone turn off or silence their cell phones and other communication devices. Please remove all badges from your person, as there will be photography. Today's ceremony will be uncovered for uniformed service members except those in the official party. The official party will arrive in just a few moments. For those here who might be unfamiliar with the change of command ceremony, I'd like to explain today's event. The change of command ceremony is not prescribed specifically by US Naval regulations, but rather is a long-standing Naval tradition. Only in the military does the instantaneous transfer of complete power and a total authority from one individual to another exist. Our Navy, an organization of explicit discipline, lends itself to the perpetuation of more venerated customs, heroic traditions, and dignified ceremonies. The change of command ceremony is designed to publicize to all members of the command the absolute transfer of authority from one commander to another. The ceremony is by tradition formal and impressive. This strengthens respect for authority and is the underpinning of the good order and discipline vital to any military organization. The culmination of the ceremony is the formal reading of the official orders. The public reading of orders began in the days when the movement of mail and personnel was slow and unreliable. The ceremony was thus designed to ensure only duly authorized officers held command and that all aboard were aware of the authenticity of the new commander. The responsibility of command passes from one to the other when the relieving officer says, I relieve you, ma'am, and the officer being relieved responds, I stand relieved. Presiding over today's ceremony is the 78th Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro. Please rise for the arrival of the official party, parading of the colors, singing of our national anthem, and the invocation. Staff, attention. Bosun, post the side, boys. Rear Admiral, United States Navy, arriving. Naval War College, arriving. Navy arriving.
Bosun, retire the side boys. Aye, aye, Master Chief. Side boys. Color guard, parade the colors. Petty Officer Moyer, Navy Band Northeast, will now sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Retire the colors. Chaplain Irwin will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal God, we pray that you grace this change of command ceremony for the United States Naval War College with your divine presence. We thank you for the outgoing president, Rear Admiral Chatfield, who has exemplified the highest standards of naval tradition and illustrated true leadership consistent with both moral integrity and professional excellence. Dear God, we recognize the ongoing support and encouragement of President Chatfield's family, especially her husband, David, during all the hardships and challenges of military life. As command leadership is transferred this very hour, we pray for the incoming president, Rear Admiral Garvin, that you may grant him faithful remembrance of the past, timely prudence for the present, and strategic vision for the future. Gracious God, guide us with an unwavering resolution to pursue academic inquiry, ethical leadership, and mission readiness as a steadfast foundation for national security and global peace. For we pray in your holy name, amen. You may all be seated. the 57th President of the U.S. Naval War College, Rear Admiral Shoshana Chatfield. We 
We have many honored and distinguished guests here today, and I'm just so delighted to be able to welcome you all. Senator Whitehouse, Secretary Mindendorf, Secretary Del Toro, Anne Hogg, representing Admiral Hogg. Admirals, generals, provost, deans, chairs, faculty, staff, and students, and our dear guests and our families, welcome to the United States Naval War College Change of Command Ceremony. I thought I might start this ceremony in the way that we've been operating over the past four years, and that is flipping it. We flipped our classrooms, we flipped our curriculum, and today we're going to flip this ceremony and start by offering the Distinguished Graduate Leadership Award and celebrating the achievements and leadership of the 78th Secretary of the Navy, Carlos Del Toro. <laughs> In 1996, the U.S. Naval College established the Distinguished Graduate Leadership Award to honor graduates who have earned positions of prominence in the national defense field. The criterion for selection of the Distinguished Graduate include attainment of positions of senior leadership in government service, career accomplishments that are inspiring to the Naval War College students, and an expressed interest in the professional military education. A board of representatives from the Naval War College considers graduates who qualify for the recognition and submits a nominee to the president of the college for approval. The president, U.S. Naval War College, takes pleasure in designating the Honorable Carlos Del Toro as the 2022 recipient of the Distinguished Graduate Leadership Award in recognition of his exceptional service to the nation, the Department of Defense, the Department of the Navy, and the U.S. Naval War College. No wonder my staff insisted I must get here on time. <laughs> Our team confirmed that Secretary Carlos Del Toro is the first Secretary of the Navy to be a graduate of the Naval War College. The distinction holds immense value as it signifies the profound connection between his educational and developmental journey and his current role as the highest ranking civilian leader of the United States Navy. Furthermore, Secretary Del Toro's remarkable educational accomplishments extend beyond his Naval War College degree in a trailblazing feat, and in this case, by being the first U.S. Naval War College SECNAV graduate, he is also the first Secretary of the Navy to have graduated from the Naval War College, the Naval Postgraduate School, and the United States Naval Academy. <laughs> Sir, I remember my first meeting with you at the War College, you arrived here with your wife to tour the grounds and she wanted to tour the house that you'd lived in. And you caught me un unprepared. And I was surprised when you said, have you read my thesis? <laughs> <laughs> Future naval strategy in the Western Hemisphere. Yeah, I had to do some quick thinking. And uh, I sincerely hoped that you took my honest answer then as a sign that you could always rely on my absolute honesty and that we were developing a special bond of trust. Like so many of us in the Navy, I've since educated myself on your writing and it was impressive. Still, I've been far more impressed by your strategic guidance, one Navy Marine Corps team. 
your vision to build, train, and equip naval forces for effective deterrence and victory in conflicts, aligning with defense strategy and national security priorities. The urgency to address unprecedented challenges, maintain maritime dominance, empower personnel, and strengthen partnerships. Your guidance on climate change, Climate Action 2030, your testimony, your talks on leadership development and a culture of belonging, your efforts to build resilience and readiness in our department, the establishment of the Naval Education Task Force and its work on the Naval University system will be your legacy. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today and to address this assembled group here at the United States Naval War College. Your experience and lifetime of service provide a model for our graduates to emulate and for our faculty and staff to strive for as they move on to greater levels of responsibility within our Department of Defense, the interagency, and the militaries of our important international partners. We hope that you um, received the award uh, knowing that you genuinely embody the ideal of a distinguished graduate of this institution. Ladies and gentlemen, the 78th Secretary of the Navy, Carlos del Toro. You got me. <laughs> I can't begin to tell you how touched I am. When I came here, and it's really a surprise, it's not in my speech. <laughs> When I came here in 1986 with my wife, Betty, and our then three children, and Betty was pregnant with our fourth, uh, we moved into base housing. And I knew that this would be a very special year for me and my family. And I'll touch on some of that, certainly in the speech. Um, for me, it was an extraordinary year, one that granted me the opportunity to think, to think for an entire year about naval strategy, about military strategy, about how perhaps as junior officers and then later senior officers, we could potentially make a bigger difference in the world that we live in in order to keep our country safe. And I must say that although I got a C on my first paper, <laughs> it proved itself to be true because it was in that very first year here at the War College that I learned so much about naval strategy, about military strategy, about the very difficult decisions that our senior most leaders, both in uniform and civilians, have to make on behalf of our country. And how very important it is, before making those strategic decisions, to really carefully weigh all the factors that are at play. Those that are obvious, but perhaps more importantly, those that are not obvious, the primary and the secondary consequences of our actions are extremely important to the men and women who we truly serve in the uniformed services. That's what the Navy War College taught me, and I am so thankful and grateful to you for this special recognition. Um, but today is not just about me. It's more importantly about both of you. And so I'm deeply honored. There is no other place in the United States, there is no other place in the world that I need to be here today, more importantly than here at the Navy War College to officiate over this extremely important ceremony that's so critical to our Navy, to our national security, to our country. So good morning, everyone. And thanks, Admiral Chatfield, for this wonderful surprise. It is wonderful to be here with you in this historic city of Newport. And thank you, Mayor, for your leadership of this great city, and Senator, for your leadership of this great state that I have perhaps lived in more so than any other state in the United States because I've moved 17 times in 23 years. And coming back to Newport, well, at least during the spring, summer, and fall, was always very pleasant. <laughs> as both the 78th Secretary of the Navy, and as was mentioned, the, sec the only Secretary of the Navy, who is a graduate of the Navy War College, I truly treasure every opportunity that I have to come to this storied 
institution. I'm here today to personally express my appreciation to Admiral Chatfield for her service as the 57th President of the Navy War College. And I also want to introduce the soon-to-be 58th President, Rear Admiral Garvin. And I have an important development as well in naval education to announce to you today in honor and significance of this ceremony. But first, I'd like to take off for a bit perspective because I want all present to truly understand the very importance of today's ceremony. History has shown time and again that victory is not possible without sea power. History has shown that. Giants such as Alexander Hamilton, who advocated for our Navy at the very beginning of our nation, and Alfred Thayer Mahan, who authored The Influence of Sea Power Upon History, revolutionized the way that we view naval power. President Theodore Roosevelt sent the Great White Fleet around the world to demonstrate his maximum good Navy is not a provocation to war, it is the surest guarantee of peace. A portrait of his flagship, the Olympia, is displayed in my office as a reminder every single day of the power that naval, war, that naval power brings to bear. Three decades later, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, whose picture also adorns my office, led the country on the greatest naval mobilization that the world has ever seen. Mahan, TR, FDR, Hamilton, these strategic thinkers, strategic thinkers, proved once and for all that both our prosperity and our security are dependent upon unfettered access to the seas. As Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin put it so well in his recent address at the Naval Academy, the lifeblood of the rules-based international order is actually seawater. I would like to add that the very foundation of our nation's economic security relies indeed on our maritime security. And key to the success of our naval services is a well-educated cadre of officers, sailors, and Marines, as well as our Department of the Navy civilians. Often when I'm asked, what's the difference between us and them, them being our adversaries, I often say that it's us who actually train our leaders, both enlisted and in officers, officers, to think, to think strategically. They, on the other hand, often simply train or script their people to fight. And there's a fundamental difference between those two concepts. Since 1884, the Navy War College has been the bedrock of leadership and educational development for our mid and senior grade officers. The Navy War College is vital to ensuring that our national decision makers, the leaders of our fleet and our Marine force, and the officers of our partner and allies who come to train here are ready to confront the challenges of today and of tomorrow. Overseeing this effort is the president of the Navy War College. And let me share a quote by the first president of the Navy War College, Rear Admiral Stephen Luce, on the very first year of its founding. The Naval War College, he said, is, and I quote, a place of original research on all questions relating to war and the statesmanship connected with war or the prevention of war, unquote. This is just as true today as it was in 1884. It is as true today as it was when the 62nd Secretary of the Navy served Ambassador Mittendorf and faced many challenges during his time. And I welcome you as well too, Mr. Secretary. It's a great honor to be here with you. We, the United States of America, do not seek war. However, we will defend our nation's security, and we will assist other like-minded countries around the globe as we together uphold the universal values that we hold so dear. And the Navy War College is at the front, addressing these difficult issues and proposing strategies that lead towards peace for our nation and all nations. As a Secretary of the Navy, I personally rely on the president of this institution to execute my guidance and ensure that we continue developing thoughtful, well-rounded leaders who are equipped to think independently and make the right decisions under pressure. 
And although I did not have the privilege of picking you, President Chatfield, I had the pleasure of selecting the 58th president of the War College. And I, asked, I suggest that if you asked him how difficult the interview was, it was quite difficult because I hold this position to be as strategic a position in our Navy as the CNO, the vice CNO, or any of the other three or four star level positions. And so I hope you can see just how important today's events are. This is not just a mere formality. The president of the Navy War College is entrusted with tremendous responsibility. Their words, their guidance, their direction set the course for the future of naval education upon which the success of our Navy and our nation lies. Rear Admiral Chatfield understands this fully. In her tenure, she has taken the Navy War College to new heights, presiding over numerous advancements. As the 57th, and also, by chance, the very first female president, she has surpassed all of our expectations. Leveraging her prior naval experiences, including five command tours, as well as her doctorate of education, she guided this school with great skill through myriad challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. Rear Admiral Chatfield and her team quickly adopted to constraints of isolation and social distancing, utilizing virtual and hybrid learning technologies to keep students and faculty safe while continuing to deliver world-class education. This commitment to academic excellence is captured in the Navy War College's graduation and course completion rates throughout COVID-19, which either met or exceeded based on the program of study pre-pandemic levels. Recognizing today's rapid changing global environment, Rear Admiral Chatfield led the development of the college's most recent strategic plan, which will ensure this institution continues to adopt and remain relevant as it informs today's decision makers and educates tomorrow's leaders. Today, we are seeing tangible results related to the lines of efforts nestled in the strategic plan that she set forth only a year ago. And examples of this include facilitating the Joint Force Maritime Component Commander course with Pacific Fleet, running tabletop exercises at the Association of Southeast Asian Nations Defense Ministerial Meeting in Thailand, presiding over numerous war games and exercises such as the deterrence and escalation game and, and review exercise, the Naval Contested Logistics War Game, and the Rockford Group Workshop. And the Newport Manual on the Law of Naval Warfare, released just last week, has already been downloaded over 1,300 times. Incorporating a woman peace and security focus throughout the professional military education curriculum, so very important. Co-hosting the recent forum at Newport with Salve Regina University, highlighting the effects of climate change on our naval services with support from our senator and fostering a more inclusive learning environment for all students, faculty, and staff through, through the hiring of the Naval War College's first chief diversity officer. Again, these are just a few of the highlights of the tremendous work underway here in Newport in support of our operational commanders around the globe. And we look forward to seeing how this school continues to evolve throughout its transformation. Rear Admiral Chatfield, I cannot thank you and your husband, David, enough for your tireless efforts these past four years as you both dedicated your time and energy to supporting our War College family. And Mrs. Scoville, your daughter-in-law is indeed one of our nation's greatest leaders, both in the Navy and in the academic community, and I have no doubt that you are just as proud of her as we are. And can I ask you both to please stand and be recognized? I certainly could not be more pleased that Rear Admiral Chatfield has been nominated by me to represent, and the president, <laughs> shouldn't leave him out, right? <laughs> to represent our nation with honor and distinction as the U.S. military representative to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization Military Committee. And we all eagerly await the results of the Senate confirmation process on her nomination to Vice Admiral. 
And perhaps all of you can email. And if so desired, perhaps all of you can email Senator Tuberville to get that process moving. <laughs> now, while today is a bittersweet day for Rear Admiral Chatfield and her family, they can rest assured that our beloved school is in great hands with her relief. Rear Admiral Garvin, Cheryl, Kaylin, Lauren, let me be amongst the first to welcome you to the Naval War College. Rear Admiral Garvin, we are excited to have you on board and I have no doubt you are eager to get to work as the 58th president of the Navy War College. As you assume command for the sixth time in your distinguished naval career, I have no doubt that you are ready to pick up where Admiral Chatfield left off as a steward of this historic institution. Remember, you are not alone in this endeavor as you navigate the challenges that lie ahead. The Chief of Naval Operations and I will always be available to you throughout your tenure leading this institution. Do not hesitate to call us and I won't hesitate to call you, I assure you that. <laughs> I look forward to working with you during your time as president to ensure our officers and indeed students from around the globe receive the skills necessary to lead their nation's armed forces and decades to come. From leading sailors both afloat and ashore to most recently serving as commander of Naval Education and Training Command, you are well aware of the type of leaders that this school strives to produce and that we need in the Navy. And before I make my announcement, I'd like to ask Mrs. Garvin and her family to please stand and be recognized as well, too. In honor, of both your long careers and service to our country. I think it's special and I chose to do this here today, to be able to announce a new Naval Education Strategy for the Department of the Navy that will guide you and all your leaders in producing the sailors, the Marines and civilians our nation needs to maintain decisive advantage in our rapidly changing global security environment. Soon after taking office in August of 2021, I set forth my three enduring priorities to guide the Department of the Navy's efforts. They are, one, strengthening maritime dominance in all that we do in each domain, building a culture of warfighting excellence, including at this school and every other institution throughout the Navy, and enhancing our strategic partnerships around the globe. And in 2022, I established the Naval Education Task Force in order to assess our progress on education efforts and identify opportunities for improvement that have been going on for several years, but were not able to truly execute. Informed by this task force findings, I directed the establishment of the Naval Education Board, an internal board of senior Department of the Navy leaders to strengthen Naval Education governance by deliberating on top education issues to deliver warfighting advantage. And I also directed the creation of a Naval Education Strategy, a key document that details the vision, ways, means, the department will adopt to prove our naval education and modernize our educational enterprise. This strategy is the culmination of countless hours, days, weeks, months, and years of research, study, and analysis by subject matter experts throughout our department. It provides a strategic guidance and vision for, the naval, ed for naval education in the next five to 10 years. And it sets forth three lines of efforts. First, to implement the learning continuum with a focus on continuum for the entire Naval Force, Navy and Marine Corps. Second, to integrate education into talent management frameworks for more precise and agile talent management. And third, to strengthen the Naval University system as a whole. These lines of efforts together form a comprehensive framework to address critical warfighting needs and each is prefaced with a vision for the future and a list of prioritized objectives to achieve that vision. I'm incredibly proud of this strategy. There is indeed nothing more important to me than education. My parents instilled the value of education in me from a very early age. It is thanks to their focus on my education that I was able to earn a seat at the Naval Academy after my childhood as a Cuban American immigrant in New York City. The Navy offered me incredible opportunities to further my education 
right here at the Navy War College, at the Postgraduate School, and also at the George Washington University, where I got a master's in legislative affairs. Who would have thought I would ever have to use that <laughs> in my future? I simply cannot possibly repay the Navy for everything it gave me, but what an amazing and wonderful opportunity I have now to give it my very best. This Naval Education Strategy will be the educational roadmap for the Department of the Navy for years to come, and it will enhance educational opportunities for all sailors, Marines, and civilians so that many more may benefit from a top quality education, as I did, and have the opportunity to contribute to this nation's national security. But ultimately, this strategy will benefit not just our department personnel, it will enhance that strategic advantage as a nation because we are fundamentally a maritime nation. We have always been one, and we must never forget the importance of sea power in maintaining the global order. In closing, Admiral Chatfield, Admiral Garvin, and your families, thank you all for your dedication and support to our officers, our sailors, and the Navy War College. May God con continue to bless our sailors, Marines, civilians, the students, the faculty, and staff of this institution, and their families. Thank you so very much. Guests, please rise for the reading of the citation to accompany the award of the Distinguished Service Medal to Rear Admiral Chatfield. Military guests, attention to award. For exceptionally meritorious service to the United States in a duty of great responsibility as President, Naval War College from July 2019 through June 2023, Rear Admiral Chatfield led the college through a turbulent period and enhanced its reputation as a premier military educational institution despite the coronavirus pandemic and other challenges. She implemented innovative strategies, integrated wargaming across the naval education continuum, and advanced the training of naval officers and civilian leaders by promoting intellectual curiosity and strategic foresight. She played a pivotal role in shaping the future of the Navy and the broader national security community through groundbreaking research and analysis, and by supporting hundreds of domestic and international conferences, including the current strategy forum hosted by the Secretary of the Navy and the International Sea Power Symposium hosted by the Chief of Naval Operations. By her distinctive accomplishments, exemplary leadership, and devotion to duty, Rear Admiral Chatfield reflected great credit upon herself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, signed, Carlos Del Toro, Secretary of the Navy. <laughs> Guests, please be seated. Mr. David Scoville, please join Rear Admiral Chatfield on the stage. Since the founding of the U.S. Naval War College in 1888, it has been customary for each president to have their portrait forever memorialized in canvas painting. Admiral Chatfield's portrait was, a, was completed by Mr. G. Ruan. Admiral Chatfield, please unveil your portrait. The portrait will remain on the stage and be available for viewing following the ceremony. Once again, the President of the U.S. Naval War College, Rear Admiral Shoshana Chatfield.
Wow. I cried when I saw it. <laughs> well, I don't know how many people I've told that being the president of the Naval War College was my dream job. In the summer of 2019, David and I were asked if we would take this job at Deanport. I was a one-star admiral, and we were concluding our exceptional tour on Guam. And we jumped at the chance to come to Newport, to become part of this extraordinary community and take on the important work at the Navy's home of thought. We joined this robust and thriving community in August 2019, and we were immediately inspired by the people here scholars and practitioners and researchers and operators, administrators, and so many people focused on supporting this mission. Each member of this team is an essential and vital connection to our students and our mission. I'm grateful every day that teammates here at the Naval War College choose to spend their time in service to this college, to each other, and to our students who must go out into the world, back to their organizations, and implement and make decisions and lead. Now that David and I have been here for four years, I have a strong sense of wonder about all of us being so lucky to come here. It makes me think of the way that author Bill Bryson described the development of humankind on planet Earth with so many species and individuals having come and gone forever. And thinking about it quite rightly, he's right that each of us were fortunate to have ancestors who survived, who weren't mutilated or burned or drowned or crushed or otherwise prevented from making another generation. Similarly, it boggles my mind to think how incredibly unlikely it is that we all came here. What a coincidence. And to have the concentration of similarities and differences that produces such an incredible connection to our mission and optimizes the work of this institution. Here in Newport and at our many locations around the world, we inform today's decision makers and educate tomorrow's leaders. One of our previous Naval War College students, our alumni General Mark Milley, routinely points out that war is a human activity. And I usually smile at that point, since that's exactly what we study here at the Naval War College. And as its president, uh, of course, I get one or two or three inches taller. Uh, to pridefully think that somehow the chairman's perspective was cultivated and developed right here in Newport. He says, I would argue that we are in the midst of a fundamental change in the character of war. The nature of war never changes, it's immutable. War is a human function, a behavior that involves emotions, fears, friction, and chance. It is the imposition of political will on your opponent by the use of violence. The character of war, though, is how you fight, when and where, and with what weapons. It is the doctrine, organization, and materiel. The character of war does change, and it changes often. Every time a new technology is introduced, the character of war is changing. But we undergo fundamental shifts in the character of war only once in a while. It doesn't happen often. The chairman's policies, testimony, and speeches demonstrate that education isn't something you do during a gap year between sea duty. For a large enterprise like ours, education is an essential part of human capital development and a well-known practice in industry. Large organizations must develop leaders and practitioners to gain advantage over their competitors. Develop strategies and systems first and better than their opponents. Seize opportunity where another might see only barriers or impasse. Businesses that don't invest in developing their talent do not last long in the marketplace. During World War I, the Naval War College suspended courses for a time to focus on operations. 
But when faced with the same decision leading up to World War II, our previous president, Admiral Kalfas, with strong backing from Admiral Nimitz, made persuasive arguments that the Naval War College should shorten its course, but continue to deliver, deliver fundamentals of war education to our officers and leaders. They reasoned that naval officers needed to study history to understand where the proper application of fundamentals of war yielded success where certain failures to adhere to the principles were likely to foreclose success. Under the leadership of my friend, Vice Admiral Jeffrey Hughes, the Naval Education Enterprise is working more closely than ever to meet the needs of our Navy in warfighting development. The Navy's learning continuum delivers relevant education that prepares our students for their future success and our Navy's warfighting advantage. When I first arrived in Newport, my focus was on restoring confidence in our community and promoting the culture and values that would maximize our performance and examining and improving our internal programs and business practices. Our creditors had highlighted additional areas where they thought increased attention and work would improve our institution, such as strengthening our governing board. And I think we may have one member of our newly established Education for Sea Power uh, subcommittee here. Um, and if you are, please raise your hand. I hadn't had a chance to greet you yet. Uh, but I do know we had one host who was scheduled to come. Okay, and maybe we'll see her later. Uh, or maybe we're seeing them online. Thank you for being here. Uh, additionally, managing financial uncertainty and aligning mission and purposes with available resources. Strengthening the role of faculty in institutional governance, which we have done by implementing our Faculty Advisory Council after learning a great deal and celebrating the achievements of our inaugural Faculty Senate. And we have also worked hard to achieve our goals to increase diversity among faculty, the last of the recommendations from our accreditor. Our college community has raced with gusto to meet and exceed these goals that we placed on ourselves. And I'm grateful for the guidance and support from my first team here at the Naval War College, Interim Dean Dr. Jay Hickey and Captain Joe Girard, my Chief of Staff, for their assistance in those early days. And I know Joe is here, I'm not sure if Jay is, but please raise your hand. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Together, our college community has become more unified in our purpose and more ready to face the future through two unlikely upheavals in our collective experience. The COVID pandemic and Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine. By February 2020, we were growing increasingly concerned about the impact of a new disease that was rapidly affecting countries around the world with terrible outcomes. Hot pockets had emerged and we knew the virus was traveling fast. Throughout our deaneries, we began to prepare for the disruption. I laid out two simple priorities, the health and well-being of our community and the completion of degrees and certificates, and absolutely everyone dug in to help. Within weeks, our community made the transition, and on March 16th, 2020, we transitioned to mission essential personnel, and most of our faculty and staff began working remotely from home. This required across the board new processes and accommodations for many of our routine tasks. From those initial achievable priorities, we began to add score on the board. We delivered our JPME and master's degrees. We modified the structure, delivery, and content of our short operational level of warfare courses to accommodate the two-week quarantine. We tested our ability to deliver quality outcomes in a distributing wargaming. We revamped our student in and out processing procedures. We rapidly transformed our library support and book checkout pr procedures to digitalize them. And through it all, we continued our major renovation to Sims Hall, yielding New England's largest secure space of its kind and our Navy's premier wargaming facility. 
In early 2021, when we finally learned that we would have a vaccine, we also learned that we were, in fact, on one of the lowest priorities for that vaccine, with the exception of our students who would tra transition overseas. However, since the vaccine had a short shelf life, we were able to take advantage of an increased and improved process that developed in 24 hours through our IT department. So it pays to be first. It pays to have technology on your side. And when you're first in line, sometimes you get extra doses. So thank you, IT department. You know, in command, uh, you remember your moments of most severe anxiety. And so I remember so vividly being at the Navy League's dinner and I was just about to state our Secretary of the Navy's four C's, the challenges that he was gonna get after, and I was ready, and I got China, climate, and culture, and I forgot number four. <laughs> you know, and the adrenaline has to kick in. If it was COVID, I forgot COVID. <laughs> That's when I knew we had it wired. So I wanna thank everyone who was involved in getting this institution through COVID, in particular, our threat working group, so many of you met regularly to consider any vulnerabilities that we had and the threats to the well-being of our community. I'm grateful to you and thank you. Our connection to this college deepened through our collective response to COVID. For that reason and for the performance of this college during that time, we were awarded the Meritorious Unit Commendation from 15 March 2020 to 24 June 2021. Every person who was assigned owns a piece of that award. In the summer of 2021, Harvard President Larry uh, Bacow uh, addressed a group of presidents who had met online for a discussion about COVID. He suggested that presidents should be very deliberate when thinking about return to campuses. So when we asked our faculty to return, we set up a movable program. We traveled throughout this campus to reconnect with it physically, to fall in love all over again with the Naval War College. I've seen that love manifest often since that time. That care that we've taken to communicate with each other, to shore each other up, to help across the college with, college with conferences, symposia, and curriculum development. Our new, renewed focus on collegiality and cross-college efforts to support important research conferences and outreach is the new normal. David and I were in Belgium when Russia, in violation of its signed agreement to respect the sovereignty, the sovereignty of Ukraine's borders, invaded Ukraine in 2014 following the Sochi Olympics. Our NATO alliance quickly responded with reassurance activities focusing keenly on interoperability and removal of barriers to rapid deployability. Significant changes were developed and adopted by member nations to face these new challenges. I was fortunate to work for two great leaders during that time, Sakir Phil Breedlove, United States Air Force, as his military assistant and former president of the United States Naval War College, John Christensen, a very good friend. Vice Admiral Christensen gave me an incredible exposure to the power of intentional thinking and the kind of great leadership that comes from perspective taking, development and testing of new frameworks and the power of treating people with dignity and respect. I am grateful to both of them for trusting me and preparing me for a future assignment as the U.S. military representative to the military committee, should I be confirmed. Our world faces challenges today that will test our resolve. The work of the Naval War College has become even more important. This community, under the leadership of new president Pete Garvin, and Provost Dr. Stephen Mariano will move rapidly to complete the transition to outcomes-based learning, support the sponsors of the Navy's leader development continuum, and achieve the goals laid out in the strategic plan once we've reviewed it against the new Naval Education Strategy. 
We will continue to invest in areas where we anticipate the future development of the force. To develop a new cadre of experts and new thinking on the subjects, we are grateful to the Naval War College Foundation for their generous support to pilot initiatives that the Navy needs to work on now. Change is the hard and important work of the college, but we will move forward with speed because the Navy is counting on us and because we are the best suited for this work. I want to thank again my good friend Jeff Hughes. Sir, I'm a big fan. So great to see all that you have achieved. Admirals Franchetti and Gilday and Munch for giving me the support and reins here at the helm of this institution. I also want to thank my family, Jordana and Brian. Thank you for being here. I'd also like to thank my husband, David. I'm so lucky to have a partner in this journey. David, I love you. Thank you so much for being here with me. I also have a gift for Patsy. My own parents can't be here, Jordana and I lost our mom and dad, but I want to thank you, Patsy, for welcoming me to this family. Every person that chooses to take employment here at the Naval War College owns a piece of its success. And when we're on our game, it's like the lens of a camera becomes hyper-focused and so clear, like this screen, which was a gift of our Naval War College Foundation. And we're grateful for this support. Uh, Pete, you look great. Um, <laughs> we, we did explore whether or not we could have me evaporate and uh, <laughs> leave in a cloudburst. Uh, but I do want to thank the members of, our Naval, uh, of the Naval War College Foundation, CEO George Lang, uh, recent um, chairman Phil Bilden and current chairman Dan Holland. Uh, please raise your hands. Thank you so much for the support of your organization. As I pass the baton of leadership today to Rear Admiral Pete Garvin, I am um, convinced that there is no better officer to lead this institution into the future. His background as commander of the Naval Education and Training Command and his commitment to the Navy's strategic and operational uh, policy and doctrine will be the future and will provide success in all areas. I'm deeply honored at this time to make a final special announcement, one that resonates with our uh, collective spirit and strength of purpose and exemplifies the fact that everyone owns a piece of this place. Today I announce that we will recognize the dedicated service of a remarkable individual one whose memory will serve as an inspiration to all within our institution and beyond. We remember Daniel J. Curran, a cherished member of our family who we tragically lost in April of 2021. Daniel was not just an essential part of our security team here at the Naval War College, but also a highly decorated veteran of the United States Army who served our country with unyielding bravery and steadfast commitment. With a heart of service, he was deployed to Afghanistan in 2013 and received the Afghanistan Campaign Medal with two campaign stars, a combat action badge and three Army Achievement Medals, along with numerous other unit and personal accolades. He was a beacon of courage and dedication, embodying the values that we hold so dear. 
His memory and service and devotion to our institution are not lost upon us. His legacy is one of commitment, loyalty, and sacrifice for the protection of our nation and this hollowed institution. Daniel's service reminds us all of the courage and dedication our roles require, no matter the capacity in which we serve. So to honor his legacy and dedication, we announce the creation of the Daniel J. Curran Award for Outstanding Professional in Physical Security. This annual award will be presented to a security professional who exemplifies the outstanding dedication, service, and professional excellence that Daniel demonstrated every day. It is with a poignant note that I must mention that Daniel's mother is also a longer serving member of our staff here at the Naval War College. Our hearts reach out to her now as always as we pay tribute to her son's memory. Let this award serve as a testament that Daniel's legacy is not forgotten but lives on in our hearts and in our commitment to this mission. So it's in his spirit that I am inspired today. <clears throat> May his memory live on within the halls of this institution he loved and so, served so faithfully. I will remember forever the honor of working alongside him and each of you. Thank you so much for all you do. Command Master Chief, haul down my flag. Haul down the flag. I, Senior Chief Lee, haul down Rear Admiral Chatfield's flag. Haul down the Admiral Chief Admiral Chatfield's flag, I MSG. MSG, Admiral Chatfield's flag for haul down. Very well. Admiral, your flag has been hauled down. Very well. <sighs> Red McGarvin, I am ready to be relieved. All please rise. Military guests, attention to orders. I will now read my orders. CNO Order 0313, when directed by reporting senior detached in June 2023 from duty as Commander Naval Education and Training Command, report no later than June 2023 for duty as President United States Naval War College. Command Master Chief, break my flag. Aye, sir. Senior Chief Lee, break Rear Admiral Garvin's flag. Break Admiral Garvin's flag. Aye, Master Chief. Master Chief, Admiral Garvin's flag has been broken. Very well. Admiral Garvin, your flag has been broken, sir. Very well. Well, good Please morning. Please be seated. It is my pleasure to introduce the 58th president. <laughs> Senior 
So the secretary was right. I'm eager to get started. <laughs> yeah. So good morning. Welcome, distinguished guests, esteemed faculty members, staff, shipmates, friends, and family, both here and online. It is with great honor and deep humility that I stand before you as the 58th president of the United States Naval War College. I want to express my sincere gratitude to the Secretary of the Navy, the Chief of Naval Operations, the faculty, and the staff for placing their trust in me to lead this prestigious institution. I'd also like to thank Rear Admiral Chatfield and her husband David for the warm welcome to Newport. And another thank you to the team that had a hand in planning and executing today's ceremony. At the outset, I want to acknowledge the tremendous legacy of leadership and excellence that this institution has established throughout history. For nearly 140 years, the United States Naval War College has served as a beacon of intellectual rigor and strategic thinking, shaping the minds of our nation's military leaders and advancing the art of naval warfare. And as SECNAV mentioned, we should recall the vision first established by Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce, who in 1884 founded the United States Naval War College to serve as, quote, a place of original research on all questions relating to war and to statesmanship connected with war or the prevention of war. These words ring especially true in today, today's presence. In this increasingly complex world, emphasizing the enduring importance of naval power and the vital role of the United States Naval War College in sharpening the strategic minds that will secure our nation's interests on the high seas and beyond. Now, as we begin the next chapter of the United States Naval War College, we should also recall the more recent words of our Secretary of the Navy. Quote, leadership is not just about guiding ships across vast, vast oceans. It is about fostering a culture of innovation and adaptability and intellectual growth. The Naval War College serves as the crucible where our future leaders are forged, and it is our duty to empower them with the knowledge and skills necessary to navigate the complex challenges of tomorrow. Now our charge is to operationalize those words as we uphold the legacy of excellence and prepare our leaders for the challenges ahead. In an era where information flows at unprecedented speeds and the boundaries of warfare continue to expand, we must fully harness the power of higher education to cultivate critical thinking, develop strategic foresight, and foster a deep understanding of the intricate dynamics that form the international stage in order to secure the cognitive advantage. Put more simply, we must ensure our warfighters can outthink, outdecide, and outfight any would be adversary. Today's strategic competi competition demands leaders with a comprehensive grasp of political, economic, technological, and cultural factors that form the balance of power. It requires individuals who can anticipate emerging threats, identify vulnerabilities, and devise innovative solutions in dynamic operating environments. The United States Naval War College stands as the vanguard of higher education, providing the rich intellectual environment where leaders are forged and refined. Together, we will rise to the challenges of today's geopolitical environment, navigate the intricacies of strategic competition, and chart a course toward a more secure and prosperous world for the future. As president, I will prioritize several key areas to ensure this institution, institution remains at the forefront of education, research, outreach, and organizational excellence. First and foremost, I am committed to ensuring that the curriculum and the research conducted at the United States Naval War College remain relevant to the fight and adaptive to the rapidly changing strategic landscape. I will work closely with the faculty to continuously evaluate and update our curriculum, ensuring that we integrate emerging disciplines. Secondly, I am committed to fostering a culture of intellectual curiosity and academic excellence centered on warfighting. I firmly believe that the greatest assets of this institution lie within the brilliant minds of our faculty, the relevant warfighting experience of our military instructors, the dedication of our students, and the steadfastness of our staff. I will support the pursuit of knowledge and encourage interdisciplinary collaboration and promote an environment that fosters critical thinking and creativity while enjoying academic freedom. Thirdly, I will strongly 